This week is National Child Protection Week and I sat down with the newly appointed Social Development Minister Lindiwe Zulu. This campaign has been running for 22 years. But what is new? We hear it all from the Minister. Thanks so much for joining us, Minister. Um, we are, understand that you've got a new portfolio and it actually coincides with the fact that it is National Child Protection Week. It's a very important week for your portfolio as Social Development Minister. Now, as the country observes this important week, we also deal with the horrific news of what happened at the school in Terfontein just yesterday, where one pupil has died and two others are recovering in a hospital after a stabbing incident. What do you have to say about this horrific incident as we kick off Child Protection Week? Um, is this a reflection of where we are as society today, a violent society perhaps? Have we lost our moral compass? Well, one life lost is a life too many, quite frankly, from where I sit. And um, the worst part is that a pupil who is supposed to have been protected himself is the pupil that took life of another pupil and then there were other pupil, pupils who I think they were trying to assist in the situation and they also ended up uh, being hurt to an extent that I was told they are in hospital. This unfortunately for us as South Africans is a reflection of a society that is going through its own challenges because you cannot walk around with an instrument that kills without you thinking that possibly you'll end up killing somebody. But I also think it's a reflection of the society and the communities where we live in an environment where issues like of gangsterism become something that people glorify to an extent that young people, as young as that young men who's ended up killing others, thinks that it's fine to belong to a gang. That then says to us as South Africans and as community overall, what is it that we're going to do to deal with this kind of societal scourge, which is affecting grown-ups, which is affecting children? The role of uh, our department, the Department of Social Development, is to really find ways and means of empowering communities so that there can be an understanding by the community themselves without any imposition of law or regulation, just the thought that mothers, fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers, brothers, sisters can do something around themselves and the role of government is to come and assist them rather than government imposing on what people have to do. So we've got a lot of work to do, which then for, to me as a new minister of, of um, uh, social development, it means what I need to do is to take a few steps back and say 25 years down the line, what are the things that we've been able to do very well? And one of which in going through the documents uh, on social development about the mandate, the legislation, the regulatory environment, we're all very good at that. The biggest challenge is how do we translate that into action, action that has the necessary impact on our communities? You've rightfully mentioned, you know, the infiltration of gangs in our schools, drug dens. How do we get around it? Because we've, you've said that it takes a whole community to intervene and to understand what should and should not be done. Do you think that we should get to a point where we treat, you know, young people like adults and, and ask them before you go into the premises of the school, search you, go through scanners to make sure that those weapons and the drugs don't get onto the school premises, when we also have a responsibility to look after those who don't want to be associated with drugs, with gangs. Yes, I believe um, that you have to have a carrot and stick approach. You can't just keep on giving carrots. There's got to be a carrot and stick approach that says, well, when things are, are going well, we don't need to be putting uh, systems of searching uh, uh, children when they're going to school. The bottom line is that we have to do the searching now, which therefore means the school uh, governing bodies, the teachers, and everyone has to accept that we have a problem 
and then the way of dealing with, of the, with that problem, partly, because that's not the, the only necessary solution, partly is to say that unfortunately our kids will have to be sessed when they go to the school because this is becoming a very serious uh, problem. I know earlier on uh, there were some discussions about that and some people were not very happy about it. They were saying that it would look like we're criminalizing uh, children. It's not about criminalizing anybody. It's about law and order, first and foremost. And law and order is not something that's about uh, violence of adults or, or crime uh, by adults. There's crime that's being now committed even by children. Therefore, it means we need to be tough and that's going to be the tough love. We need to be tough in the manner in which we protect the vulnerable. We need to be tough in ensuring that when we've got laws and regulation, those laws must bite. I think we need to take a few steps back and agree with ourselves that we've got a serious problem. How do we deal with that problem? It's about a coordinated approach at a government level because for me, social development is about safety and security. Social development is about health of our, our communities. Social uh, development is a whole package of how do we build new people in a new environment. This environment we're in today, from apartheid to the environment of democracy, it's a new environment which calls for responsibility, which calls for government ensuring that it gives services as it promises, but it's also about responsibility by our communities, including the pupils and students. It's their responsibility too, to take care of themselves. When we look at teenage pregnancies, um, I've done a couple of stories with regard to that. And we've also received a lot of information from certain communities saying that children as young as in primary school, 11, 12, they fall pregnant for whatever reason. Um, is that something that concerns you? Do you think that we must start looking at how we can approach it at schools, you know, maybe taking condoms to primary school schools? Is that something that must be looked at? We must be realistic about today's life and growth and environment in which we live in. How I grew up 60 years ago or 61 years ago now is completely different. Um, to the children today. I look at my grandchildren. I looked at my nine-year-old granddaughter, for instance, and I, 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 I see the conversation that I'm having with her, and I'm realizing that that's not a conversation which would have been 20, 30 years ago. So I've got to wake up to the reality that, that here is this conversation. I must accept and have that conversation. It therefore for me means social development also needs to take a step back, working together with teachers, schools and everything to say what are the new things that are happening in our society that would call on us to do things in a different way. Accept the fact that now children in primary school are now starting their menstruation that early, which is something that never used to happen. Because the minute that happens, what does that mean biologically? And if you're not ready to have a conversation with those children today and explain to them don't just give them the, the pad and give them the tampoons or anything of that sort. You've got to be able to explain what is happening to their bodies, what's happening in their system, what are the results if they were to go in, to end up sleeping with somebody, some boy or something of that sort. What would be the results thereof? Yes, this is our responsibility, but this is also a responsibility of families. It's a responsibility of parents. And when we talk about family today, by the way, it's no longer the usual traditional family. We need to be conscious of the fact that the structure of family today is very different to the structure of family before. Government has to have this holistic approach. In fact, I was having a conversation um, with my office uh, yesterday and I was saying to them, look, this Department of Social Development is so vast and its responsibilities are so huge. And therefore, my view is that we need to have a portfolio approach so that you don't have the department sitting there, the agency is also sitting somewhere else, and those do not speak to each other very much closely because there's only one mandate, and that mandate of social development is about improving the, the lives of people so that they can see their potential as they grow. So from the time that a child, for instance, is conceived, in my view, the environment has to be conducive for the mother, 
And that conducive nerve is about health, is about nutrition, it's about everything that goes to assisting a mother to be proud of what she's carrying, to be looking forward to having that child, rather than having a child and actually regretting, why am I having this child? Do you think that at schools we're making everything possible for the girl child to go back and go continue with her studies or with her schoolwork? Do you think that that environment that you're talking about is adequate? No, it's not adequate at all. Uh, firstly, let's take a step back and say it's also about education. Because if we were to be able to help the girl child, both children actually, both um, uh, boy and girl, if we were to help them appreciate the fact that having a child at an earlier age when you're not prepared for it is not a very good idea, which therefore means the education both at school and at home and at community level, we need to talk about these things and make them to be aware of the burden of having a child when you're not ready for a child. But that's easier said than done because uh, children experiment, they see on TV what they see and they think they also want to experiment and then they end up in that trouble. So it's also about educating our children about prevention because by the way, this whole issue of getting pregnant it's, it, it, it's, a, it's a very difficult one because we also have AIDS and HIV. And if we have to say to them prevention, when you prevent from getting pregnant, you're also preventing yourself from a variety of other uh, diseases. So we must strengthen the education uh, uh, side of it and start it early and not think that you're going to start, uh, start teaching teaching children when they are at high school. In fact, almost when they are leaving high school, that's when you start getting serious. But the homes, I would like the Department of Social Development to find ways and means of mobilizing communities, mobilizing society, mobilizing parents from home, because children start there in the home. If they don't see or don't hear the conversation at home, you expect them to then see and hear the conversation only when they get to school. That's not good enough. So as a department, I am 100% sure working closely with the Department of Education, with the Department of Health, if we hold our hands together. But I think there's another element here. Social development for me needs to be seen at a local level. As a Minister of Social Development, there's absolutely no way that I, I think I'm going to cover the entire country, the entire communities. What I would like to see is the MECs uh, for social development, what I'd like to see at the local government level, what are the systems and what are the structures that are there that are supposed to help national, provincial and local to implement these good policies which we have. Uh, there was a debate uh, a few weeks ago with regards to sex education at schools. What is your view? Um, you know, you've mentioned that you've got grandchildren of your own. What is your view? What is the appropriate age to start with uh, sex education? Because it's no longer that you can start when people are still already in high school. It starts Look, we, we, leave, we leave our children to watch TV. We're not there when they're watching the TV. So that kind of sex education that they're seeing on TV, it's not an, even an education. They're just seeing and wanting to practice. So the sooner we start with sex education, the better. As they leave primary school, I think some introduction, because look, you were talking about the fact that 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds are already falling pregnant. What does that mean? That means the reproduction in the system is already starting at that time. Because once a girl already ovulates and does all that, that, that girl can, can have a child. So what are you going to wait for? You're going to wait for that child to get to high school to start explaining what is happening. That's why my view is that I still insist families, mothers and fathers should not be embarrassed to tell their children what is going on. Simple examples. You know when uh, 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 the old wives tales that the baby comes with, the, the stock brings the baby to the home. That's absolute nonsense now. Those days are gone. The children see the neighbor's um, uh, girl pregnant. You start explaining. How did she get her belly up like that? You have to, to explain. You have to explain to the children how does a child, how is a child formed? And we mustn't undermine also the capacity of our children today. I mean, my, my eldest, um, my, my granddaughter is nine. 
but it's shocking the kind of conversations that we've started having. And it's not conversations that are, that are instigated by me. It's conversations that are started by her. Her sister is only seven. But when we sit around the table and we talk, I, I sort of like get taken aback by the topics that they're putting on the table. But I'm realizing that I need to wake up to the reality of today. This is the opportunity for me as a grandmother to say to the mother, because they live with the mother, to say to the mother, wake up to the reality. You live with these children on day to day. They're asking me the following questions. You who live with them every day, don't be shy, don't be embarrassed, don't be afraid of having the conversation uh, with them because you're empowering them. Where we miss it, I think, it's about empowering people because when you have a department of social development, it does not necessarily mean you are going to be living in each and every home. Empower the communities to appreciate and realize that these are the issues that they need to deal themselves. But how do you empower them? Make sure that the information is flowing correctly. Make sure that the infrastructure for that within our community is available. Because I look at myself, where I came from, my grandparents who brought me up and the fact that we could never have this conversation until I got pregnant at the age of 16. That's when they realized, who we've got a problem. No, not even 16, 15. I had a baby at 16. And when you think about it, it was a terrible thing to happen when your grandparents are giving you everything in order for you to get educated because they want you to be the best. So we need to take a step back as a Department of Social Development, go back to the communities and understand and appreciate what do communities want?